Hello, I know it has been a while since I've posted the new videos, but now I'm back with a new video on enzymes. Enzymes are biological catalysts that bind a substrate in a covalent way, forming an enzyme substrate complex. Enzymes act by lowering the activation energy, so the rate of the catalyzed reaction will be greater than the rate of the uncatalyzed reaction. Now let's take a look at these graphs and compare them. On the graph on the right, the activation energy of the forward and reverse reaction are lower than that shown on the left, which means that the graph on the right corresponds to a catalyzed reaction, while the one on the left corresponds to an uncatalyzed reaction. So, catalysts equally accelerate the forward and the reverse reaction so that the equilibrium constant for the reaction remains unchanged. In order to study the enzyme kinetics, the Michaelis mentin model is one of the best known and useful approaches. It takes the form of an equation describing the rate of an enzymatic reaction by relating a rate of formation of the product to a substrate concentration. The system involves two reactions where a substrate binds reversibly to, a, to the enzyme to form an enzyme substrate complex ES, which then reacts irreversibly to generate a product and to regenerate the original enzyme. The michaelis mentin model obtained after two assumptions, assumption of equilibrium and steady state is V0 equal to Vmax times the concentration of substrate over Km plus the concentration of substrate. Vmax is known as the maximum velocity obtained when, the all, when all sides of the enzymes are saturated with the substrate, whereas Km reflect the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. It is obtained for Vmax equal to. A plot of V0 is a function of a concentration of a substrate for an enzyme that obeys to michaelis mentin kinetics shows that Vmax is approached asymptomatically. The Michaelis constant Km is a concentration of a substrate yielding Vmax over 2. It reflects the affinity, which means when Km is low, the enzyme has a higher affinity for a substrate. The problem with this model is that Vmax is obtained with an asymptote, which means it's not accurate and will lead to inaccurate Km. Another graphical method, such as the one described by Lineweaver and Berg, which utilized the double reciprocal plot, were used also to determine the kinetic parameters. So the plot is a graphical representation of Lineweaver and Berg equation, which is 1 over V0 is equal to Km over Vmax times 1 over concentration of substrate plus 1 over Vmax. The equation is obtained by taking the reciprocal of michaelis mentin equation. As you can see on the graph, 1 over Vmax is the y-intercept, and minus 1 over Km is the x-intercept. This method, Lineweaver and Berg method, is used to determine the type of enzyme inhibition to distinguish between the competitive, the non-competitive, and the uncompetitive inhibitors. But the, problems with, uh, but the problem with this method is as the y-axis takes the reciprocal of the rate so it could increase any small errors in measurement. Also, most points on the plot are found far to the right of the y-axis, large values of s, and hence small values of 1 over s on the plot, are often not possible due to limited solubility, calling for a large extrapolation back to obtain the x and the y-intercepts. The Adiahovsky plot is also used to determine the kinetic parameters. It is a more accurate linear plotting method with V is, is plotted against V over concentration of substrate. The equation of Adiahovsky is obtained by multiplying the equation of lineweaver berg by V, Vmax. The equation of Adiahovsky is V is equal to Vmax minus Km times V over the concentration of substrate. So a plot of V against V over concentration of substrate will hence yield Vmax as the y-intercept, Vmax over Km as the x-intercept, and Km as the negative plot. Now if we want to see how good an enzyme is at catalyzing a reaction, we should measure the catalytic efficiency, which is Kcat over Km. Kcat is a catalytic constant also known as a turnover number, which is the maximum number of substrate converted into product per unit of time. Km 
is the affinity of an enzyme for a substrate. It is measured as being the substrate concentration when V is equal V max over 2. Now, when K cat over K m increase, efficiency of enzyme increase. Looking at the table, we can see that some enzymes have higher efficiency than, uh, than others. For example, acetylcholine studies have a K cat over K m, 1.5 uh, times 10 to the power 8, much higher than chymotrypsin having a K cat over K m 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 1. We should note that all enzymes having K cat over V max in the range of 10 to the power 8 to the 10 to the power 9 are known to be catalytic perfect enzymes. Now let's move to the inhibition part. We all know that an inhibitor is a molecule that binds to the enzyme and stops its activity. We have two types of inhibition, the reversible and the irreversible one. The irreversible inhibitors usually react with the enzyme and change it chemically via covalent bond formation. These inhibitors modify key amino acid residues needed for enzymatic activity. In contrast, reversible inhibitors bind, bind non-covalently and different types of inhibition are produced. The competitive, the non-competitive, and uncompetitive, depending on whether these inhibitors bind to, an, to the enzyme, the enzyme substrate complex, or both. Now, in this part, we will start to see each one apart. Now, let's start with the competitive inhibitors. These molecules are substrate analog. They resemble the substrate, so they compete with it to bind to the active side of the enzyme, as you can see in the figure below. Some serve as chemotherapeutic drugs like methotrexate that resemble dihydrofolate. Now let's see how the competitive inhibitor will affect the double reciprocal plot. When the inhibitor increases, all plots intersect on the y-axis. They have the same value of 1 over Vmax, so Vmax is not affected by the presence of a competitive inhibitor. What changes is the affinity. As you see, when the concentration of the inhibitor increase, minus 1 over alpha Km will decrease, which means Km will increase and the affinity of the substrate for the enzyme the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate will decrease. And this is expected because the inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site. So when inhibitor bind to the enzyme, the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate will decrease. We should note that the inhibition, this type of inhibition can be removed by a high concentration of substrate. And we should also note that alpha in the term minus 1 over alpha Km, alpha determine the degree to which the abiding of inhibitor changes the affinity of the enzyme for a substrate. The second type of inhibition is the uncompetitive one. Here, the inhibitor binds to the ES form and not, not to the free enzyme. When it binds to ES, it will cause a structural distortion of the active site, thereby rendering the enzyme catalytically inactive. If we look at the line Weaver and Burke plot to see the effect of the competitive and competitive inhibitor on it, when the concentration of inhibitor increase, the alpha over Vmax will increase, will increase too, meaning that Vmax will decrease. Moreover, the alpha or the minus alpha over Km will also increase when the concentration of uh, inhibitor increase, meaning that Km will decrease and thus the affinity will increase. So the effect of the uncompetitive inhibitor on the param kinetic parameters, it will decrease Vmax and Km. Why the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate increase when an uncompetitive inhibitor binds? If you look at the scheme drawing here, when the inhibitor binds to ES, it will stop the substrate from being able to dissociate from the enzyme, which means it will increase its affinity for the enzyme. That's why we see that Km decrease and the affinity increase. The third type of reversible inhibition is a non-competitive one, which is a type of enzyme inhibition where the inhibitor reduces the activity of an enzyme and binds equally well to the enzyme or whether or not it has already bound the substrate. In this case, the inhibitor binds to the, to the allosteric site of the enzyme and it produces plots with the same x-intercept, so the Km is unaffected 
but different slopes and y intercepts. As you can see on the Line Weaver Berg plot, Vmax decreases, but Km is unaffected. Now, this is a summary of the three types of reversible inhibition we have talked about. The competitive inhibition increase Km and leave Vmax unaffected. The diagnosis for competitive inhibition as compared with other types of inhibition is that the plots and line weaver -Berg plots will intersect on y-axis. The uncompetitive inhibition will reduce Vmax and Km and the, the diagnosis is parallel lines or parallel plots. Uh, for the uncompetitive inhibition, it will affect, the inhibitor will affect uh, Vmax only, it will decrease Vmax and leave Km unaffected and the, the, the plots will intersect on x-axis. Now we arrived at the end of this video. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.